What's going on guys? I'm Will with Gutter Fighting Secrets. Welcome back to another Warrior Wednesday where we discuss relevant topics designed to make you a better and more efficient warrior. Today what we're going to be talking about is the importance of rigorous physical training to make you a more mentally strong and physically capable warrior. You know, there's a big difference between just a physically capable warrior and a warrior who's mentally strong. Give me a couple of guys who are just mentally fucking unbreakable over a couple of like Hulk type dudes any day. And you know, I've, I've discussed this topic in a few different roundabout ways. One of them uh, was the video where I talked about the importance of being jacked in combat, how important really is it? And I kind of debunked the myth about you know, Rambo and Arnold Schwarzenegger archetype in combat, right? We, we really we really debunked that myth pretty well, if I say so myself. The real importance here is being mentally strong. And how do we bring out mental strength in our people when we train them? Or how do we instill indomitable warrior spirit in ourselves? with our own training. So what I've experienced in my time is <clears throat> there is a threshold for rig rigorous physical training. There is there is a point where it becomes too much, but that threshold can be raised incrementally. Now, whether you're designing a training program for your unit, your group, your students, or yourself, you have to kind of keep this threshold in mind. And it's like weight training, right? Where like you don't go in there and lift 100 kilos the first damn day in your gym, right? Like you're going to work your way up to it. You slowly build it up and then you take a little break. You back it down a little bit. You build a little more weight up, 5, 10 kilos at a time. This week we do 10 more, 10 more, 5 more, 3 more, 2 more, 5 more, 10 more. Something like that, right? And it's important to give ourselves a healthy break and deload for a little while as well. Well, there's no difference between this methodology that we're talking about with weight training and the methodology that I'm talking about with, we'll just call it combat training. And this could be anything from a calisthenics program to hand-to-hand -hand combat to small unit tactics, whatever it is, right? There is absolutely a threshold that you should and can push yourself right up next to before you back down just a little bit. Give your body and your mind mental and physical ability to recover. Give it a little break and then push it a little more. And this way, this is the way that we build our indomitable warrior spirit through hard physical training, through hard mental training you know when we go to one shepherd and i have one semester left because before i start um my journey towards being a small unit tactics instructor with one shepherd they make it really um fun but <laughs> mentally very challenging with time hacks that's one way that one shepherd does it i know the military does it that way as well that's why they do it you give your students or your people a hard task and don't give them enough time to do it. If they accomplish it, awesome. Awesome. But you know that there's a good chance they won't be able to accomplish everything in time. But those time hacks and that time stress really builds mental fortitude. And for whatever reason, it really reinforces whatever lesson you're trying to instill in your men as well. Uh, things like forced marches, right, are, I mean, they suck, <laughs> but they build they build the warrior spirit. You know, things like hard physical hand-to-hand -hand combat training, we all know this one, all of us who watch this channel. But, you know, getting, getting mold, right, like putting a pair of boxing gloves on and just having your partner fucking beat the shit out of your face for like a... 15, 20 seconds, like 
that really creates an indomitable warrior spirit. You know, like putting the cups on, like in Bill Wolf's training sessions. This is something I took away from Bill Wolf's training that I instill with my with my students. Put the damn cups on, put some gloves on, and fight. Right. Oh, and put a mouth guard in too. And just just fight, right? Like practice the techniques, practice them though at full speed. Like, don't kill each other, don't injure each other too bad, but like do it. And again, we don't always do that, right? Like there is a time and a place, but every now and again, you have to go hard. And when you go hard like that, it turns you into a beast. You know, I I I mentioned about um fixing your adrenal responses to to combat, right? And how to actually get to a place where you don't fear combat, where you don't have the adrenaline dumps anymore, generally speaking. One of those ways is through hard sparring and hard training all the time. Um, you know, it's not necessarily all the time where you're like cracking each other in the face full, you know, full steam, right? But you're going hard all the time. Um, you obviously want to give your your brain like you don't want to make yourself retarded by the time a fight comes, but you do want to go fucking hard. And going fucking hard is the way that we we forge this warrior spirit. You have to put yourself and your body and your mind through lots of stress and hard physical training. I really believe that it's important and i frankly unless you're over the age of 50 i want to just pick a random number out of the air i don't really want to hear it um you know we've all got injuries we've all got physical ailments we've all got things right like there there is there's very little excuse that anybody has that is acceptable um if you can't run you can walk or you can do other cardio you can swim you can bike you can do the step or whatever right you can get your cardio in and you can push yourself doing cardio you know i'm i'll say it again and again and again i think cardio is one of the most important attributes for a warrior to have you know you can sit there and do you know heavy weights all day and get you know big fucking muscles and shit but like at the end of the day if you don't have cardio you're ineffective in combat Period. It's not even my opinion. That's just a fact. Um, and you can really push yourself with your cardio. If you're fortunate enough to be able to run, you can push yourself with running quite quite hard. Um, don't do it to the point of injury, but push yourself, right? A mile today, two miles the next time, four miles the next time, right? Just, just keep pushing it, dude, and it'll make you feel amazing. Calisthenics is another amazing option for physical training, right? Like, this is why prisoners do it. Because from what I understand, I've never served time in a penitentiary, but from what I understand, uh, you're not really even supposed to, like, do a lot of shadow boxing or a lot of, like, training, sparring, or, like, drilling with your partners. If they catch you, you'll be in trouble from, from what I've heard. So, um, but these guys do burpees all fucking day for wind. And burpees will also get you, you know, in, in pretty good muscular, muscular shape as well. I'm a huge fan of calisthenics. I've been doing it um, pretty, pretty, pretty exclusively for the past month. And I've, uh, I've been enjoying the results. Um, obviously, you know, talking about physical training, hand-to-hand -hand combat, sparring, jujitsu, muay thai, boxing, wrestling, do this stuff, judo. Um, you can't go into a Krav class and really expect to become a good fighter, period. Sorry to break it to you, but it's the truth. If you're not walking out of there sometimes with a black eye or like with a little bit of a limp, you're not training. Now, as far as the, I mean, the rest of the combat applications, right? Like you can, you can practice a lot on your own. And I know a lot of us have this issue where like, we're not in a militia unit. We're not in, um, a military unit currently we're we're training solo you know um there's a lot that we can do to push ourselves if you're fortunate enough to be able to get out there and shoot there's a lot of great drills out there on uh on youtube and uh you can really push yourself with that you know dot torture and 
all those types of things. You can also uh, shoot and move. And you can you can practice getting good at that stuff, bounding, um, all types of stuff. If you only have access to an indoor range, well, maybe you can't do as much bounding with the live fire stuff. You're going to be careful with that anyway. But you can certainly do dot torture and things like that. Mentally, these these drills can stress you and push you, and that's what you need. If you are fortunate enough to have others to train with, um, certainly, certainly sim rounds and force-on-force force training is an amazing avenue. And it will stress you because sim rounds fucking hurt. And um, there's a number of CQB and otherwise um, very tactically sound small unit tactic schools that I can recommend to you. Get in touch with me via the website or the email address. Go to fightingsecrets.gmail.com. If you have any questions, I'd be glad to recommend some to you. You know, there's other ways that we can stress ourselves mentally, right? Like going out there and doing something you fucking don't like that stresses you out. Like for some people, it's like talking to people, being social, like do it. You have to stress the fuck out of yourself sometimes in order to grow. That's just the way it is. We have to be pushing ourselves hard incrementally more and more. To become better warriors. And that is my philosophy. It's lazy people don't like it. But the people who really want to become better warriors. Um, they appreciate it. Some are crazy enough like myself. We actually like it. I highly recommend that you meditate on this principle. And understand it well. And apply it to your training. Guys, check out our website, gutterfightingsecrets.com. We've got some pretty decent products out there for you. We're also going to be putting out another great video this Saturday relating to hand-to-hand -hand combat. I recommend that you check those out every Saturday. There's some good information in there, and we really strive to make it um, very useful for you. Until next time, please remember that you are your first and last line of defense, and I'll see you next time. Stay safe and train fucking horror players. Cheers. <laughs>